baby bus. Cat and Mouse in Partnership Once upon a time, there was a big fat cat. She was extremely lazy and hated to do chores. She complained every day. Ah, so troublesome. Why is it so troublesome to cook? Even eating is troublesome, and washing dishes is even more troublesome. Oh, if only there were someone to do chores for me. One day, the big fat cat was loitering on the street. She saw a mouse carrying a piggy bank. A wicked idea popped into the cat's head. This mouse is skinny and small, and he looks naive. Why don't I cheat him out of his money, then make him do my chores for me? <laughs> That's what I'll do. The big fat cat curled herself up into a ball and rolled into a corner of the wall. She pretended to cry. <laughs> I'm so sad. The mouse heard the crying and walked over. What's wrong? Why are you so sad? The big fat cat sniffed and sobbed. You, you're a mouse? <laughs> Am I dreaming? My greatest desire is to make friends with a mouse. But, but, no mouse is willing to be my friend. <laughs> the mouse comforted the big fat cat. Don't cry. I'll be your friend. The big fat cat stopped crying. R really? The mouse nodded his head earnestly. The big fat cat jumped up happily. She pretended to befriend the mouse. Mouse, since we're friends, I can't stand for you to stay in that dark, tiny mouse hole. Why don't you come live with me? My house is big and warm. The mouse was a little moved. That's great. You're a really kind cat. Just like that, the mouse went to live with the big fat cat. One day, the big fat cat was sleeping late. When she woke up, it was already midday. She told the mouse, Mouse, do you know? Friends should help one another. I provide you with a place to stay, so you must also help me with some things. Why don't you, say, help me to cook and wash dishes? The mouse thought for a moment and felt that the cat was right, so he agreed. From then on, the mouse helped the cat cook and wash the dishes every day. The big fat cat did nothing but watch TV and sleep. Autumn arrived. The food in the refrigerator was finishing soon. The big fat cat thought about the mouse's piggy bank. The weather is so cold and the food is finishing soon. Why don't I trick the mouse into giving me his piggy bank so I can buy some food? Okay, that's what I'll do. The big fat cat frowned and said to the mouse, Mouse! Winter is coming. Why don't we pool our money together to buy some food to store up? Then we won't starve in the winter time. The mouse took out his piggy bank, looked in the refrigerator, and saw that there wasn't much food left. He looked at the pitiful big fat cat and thought, It took me a long time to save this money. I really can't bear to part with it. But if I don't share it, the cat and I will starve. No way, I can't let my friend go hungry. The mouse made up his mind and gave his piggy bank to the big fat cat. Cat, I've worked hard to save this money because we're good friends. I'm taking it out. Please don't. The big fat cat snatched the piggy bank. Oh, I know, I know. I'm taking the money to buy food. You be good and stay home. I'm worried that you'll be caught in a mousetrap if you go out. The big fat cat went to the store and bought a block of delicious cheese, then swaggered into the house.
The mouse smelled the aroma of the cheese and began drooling. Wow, smells so good. Let me have a taste. The big fat cat thought, Taste? I can't let you taste. This is my cheese. I'm the only one who can taste it. I must think of a plan. The big fat cat patted the mouse's shoulder. Mouse, the cheese is for us to eat in the winter. We can't eat it now. This block of cheese smells so good. It may be stolen if we kept it in the house. Why, why don't I hide it under the table in the church? Nobody will steal from the church. What do you think? The mouse nodded his head, thinking the cat was right. The big fat cat went to the church and placed the cheese under the table. But after just one day, the cat wanted to eat the cheese. Um, I really want to eat the cheese. It must be very fragrant and tastes really good. But I don't want to share it with the mouse. I need to think of a way to go out and eat the cheese secretly. The big fat cat's eyes rolled around as she thought. She said to the mouse, Mouse, let me tell you something. My cousin has just had a baby, and she wants me to help her name it. Today, I have to go out. Can you stay home by yourself and look after the house? Okay, do whatever you need to do. Of course, none of this was true. The big fat cat did not have a cousin, and there was no baby. She went straight to the church, found the cheese, and licked it and licked it until she had eaten half of it. Ah, it tastes so good! Really, really good. Yum, yum. The big fat cat patted her tummy as she strolled along the river. She grew tired and lay down to laze in the sun. Whenever she thought about the cheese, she couldn't help licking her lips. The sky was dark when the big fat cat finally went home. The mouse went out to meet her. Cat, you're finally home. You must be very happy today. Of course. The big fat cat fell onto her bed once she got home. What did you name the baby? It's called, called, Half Gone. What? Half Gone? What a strange name. Oh, the names in our family are all like that. Nothing strange about it. After she said that, the big fat cat fell asleep. After a week, the big fat cat wanted to eat the cheese again. She said to the mouse, Mouse, I need to go out again. Another cousin has a new baby and wants me to help her name it. I have to trouble you to watch the house again. The big fat cat snuck into the church and licked the cheese until nothing was left in one breath. She mumbled to herself, I can only feel at ease when I finish eating the whole thing. Having eaten to her heart's content, she returned home with her full tummy when it was dark. The mouse saw that she was home and immediately asked her what she named her cousin's baby. The big fat cat answered lazily, The little baby is called All Gone. All Gone. This name is really strange. I've never seen it in books. All Gone. What does that mean? She shook her head, curled herself up, lay on the bed, and went to sleep. From then on, the big fat cat didn't go to name any more babies. Winter came, and the refrigerator had no more food. Thinking about the block of cheese, the mouse said, Let's go, cat. Let's get the cheese we've hidden in the church and bring it home to eat. They went to the church together. But when they got to the church, the mouse saw that the wrapper for the cheese was still there, but there wasn't a crumb of cheese left. The mouse panicked and was about to cry. It's gone, cat. Our cheese has been stolen and eaten. What are we going to do? The big fat cat pretended to be angry. Horrible! If 
If I knew who stole our cheese, I'd teach them a lesson. Hm. An eagle who lived in the spire of the church heard that and said to the big fat cat, Cat, what are you doing in the church again? Coming to eat more cheese? The first time you came, you ate half of the cheese and then finished it all the second time. What are you going to eat this time? The wax from the candle? <laughs> Hearing that, the mouse mumbled, Ate half of the cheese, half gone, all gone. Oh my goodness, you bad cat. You tricked me into being your friend, making me do chores for you and cheating me out of my piggy bank. You lied about naming babies while you snuck to the church and ate all the cheese. First, it was half gone. Then, it was all gone. Hump. The big fat cat scheme was exposed, and she lashed out angrily. Be quiet. Keep nagging and I'll eat you up too. The mouse was so angry, he hopped around. Horrible cat. Horrible. The poor mouse had not even finished saying this when the big fat cat pounced on him. When the cat was about to swallow the mouse in one gulp, the eagle swooped down, caught the big fat cat, and flew up into the air with her. You greedy cat, deceiving the mouse with friendship. And now you even want to eat him up? You're too horrible. The eagle flew and flew, then he tossed the big fat cat in the desert. She had no way to get back home again.